All right, welcome back. Let's start with this example. We have the integral of eight divided by x dx. And so when we have an integral of a function where we have x to the first power in the denominator, then we need to use the log rule for integration, which says that one divided by x dx is equal to the natural log of the absolute value of x plus c. And so in this case, if we start by pulling eight out to the front of the integral, we'll have that this is equal to eight times the integral of one divided by x dx. And then if we use this rule of integration right here, we know that the integral of one divided by x is equal to the natural log of the absolute value of x. And so this will be equal to eight times the natural log of the absolute value of x plus c. And so while this is a perfectly acceptable answer for this integral, we could actually simplify this a little bit more by using one of the properties of logs that if you have the natural log of a to the power of n, that is equal to n times the natural log of a. And so in this case, we would be reversing this process because we have eight times the natural log of x where eight would be n. And so we can move that coefficient to the inside to be a power of a in the natural log. And so in this case, we can move eight to be the power of x. And so this would be equal to the natural log of the absolute value of x to the eighth power plus c. But then we can actually remove these absolute value bars because anything to the eighth power is going to be a positive value, right? When the power of your function is an even power, then it's always going to be positive. And so there's no need for those absolute value bars. All right. And so that would be the most simplified form of the answer for this integral. And so this was the most basic case of using the log rule of integration to integrate a rational function but we can use this rule for some more complicated functions as well. And so let's take a look at some of those next. All right, so next we have the integral of three divided by three x plus two dx. And so in order to integrate this rational function, we are going to need to use the log rule of integration, although we're gonna to have to use a bit of a variation of that rule. And you can see it right here. We have the integral of one divided by u du is equal to the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. And so this is essentially the same rule that we looked at before, except we replaced x with u. But what this tells us is that if we can use u substitution for a rational function and get it to look like one divided by u, we can use this rule and integrate that rational function. And so what you wanna look for here when you have a rational function is some quantity in the denominator to the power of one, right? This quantity down here is to the power of one. And so if we set this equal to u, we would have a one divided by u function where this rule would apply. And so let's do that. We will have that u is equal to three x plus two. And if we take the derivative of that, we'll have du dx is equal to three, right? The derivative of three x is just three because the derivative of x to the first power is just equal to the coefficient of that term. And the derivative of two is zero because two is a constant. And so then if we solve for du in this case, we'll have that du is equal to three times dx, right? We multiply both sides by dx. And notice that we have a three dx in our integral right here that we can replace with du. And so if we rewrite this integral in terms of u, we will have that this is equal to the integral of one divided by u du, right? We replaced three x plus two with u. That's what we set it equal to and we replaced three times dx with du because that's what we found that that was equal to. And so now we know that the integral of one divided by u du is the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. And so we'll have that this is equal to the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. And so we can replace u with what we set it equal to, three x plus two, and we will have that our final answer is the natural log of the absolute value of three x plus two plus c. And that will be the antiderivative of this function or the solution to this integral. Let's look at another example. All right, so for our next example, we have a definite integral. We have the integral from zero to two of x squared divided by x cubed plus one. And so here we have another rational function, although we do have a variable in the numerator and the denominator. And so for a function like this, we know we're not gonna be able to use our basic rules of integration, right? We're not gonna be able to use the power rule for this function. And so that means that we're going to probably want to try to use u substitution. And so our question is going to be, what do we set equal to u? And so in this case, I see in the denominator, we have x cubed plus one, and we know that the derivative of a cubed function will be a squared function. 
And so when you're using u substitution, you want to try to find a function and its derivative. And since we know that the function here, x cubed, has a derivative that will be a function squared, that's going to be similar to what we have in the numerator here, where we have x squared. And so we'll set u equal to x cubed plus one. And then if we take the derivative of that, we'll have that du dx is equal to three x squared, right? If we use the power rule on x cubed, we multiply three down and then we subtract one from the exponent. So we have three x squared and the derivative of one is zero because one is a constant. And so if we solve for du, by multiplying both sides by dx, we'll have that du is equal to three x squared dx. But now if we look in our integral here, we want to replace x squared dx with du, but I don't see this three over there, right? This coefficient of three is nowhere to be seen in our integral. And so I'm going to divide that over to the other side. So I have du divided by three is equal to x squared dx. And now this side of the equation matches up with what we have in our integral here. And so I'll be able to replace that with this du term over here. We have du divided by three. And so if we do that, we will have that this integral is equal to the integral from zero to two of one divided by u times du divided by three, right? We replaced x cubed plus one with u because that's what we set it equal to. And we replaced x squared dx with du divided by three, which is what we found that that was equal to. And so if we pull this one third to the outside, we'll have that this is equal to one third times the integral from zero to two of one divided by u du, which now we recognize as a function that we can integrate using the log rule for integration. And so then we'll have that this is equal to one third times the natural log of the absolute value of u evaluated from zero to two. And so if I clean up my work here, our next step will be to replace u with what we set it equal to, right? Because our bounds here are defined with x, right? This is x equals two and x equals zero. And so we want to get our function in terms of x before we plug in these bounds. And so we'll have that this is equal to one third times the natural log of the absolute value of x cubed plus one. And that will be evaluated from zero to two, right? We set u equal to x cubed plus one. So that's what we replaced u with. And so now if we evaluate this function at two and subtract the evaluation at zero, we will have that this is equal to one third times the natural log of the absolute value of two cubed plus one minus the natural log of the absolute value of zero cubed plus one. All right, and so if I clean up my work, we can reduce this and we'll have that this is equal to one third times the natural log of two cubed plus one Two cubed is eight, and so eight plus one is nine, so we'll have the natural log of nine. And nine is already a positive number, so we can remove the absolute value bars and just have parentheses around nine. And then we will subtract the natural log of zero cubed plus one, and zero cubed is zero, and zero plus one is one, and the natural log of one is actually equal to zero. And so this is zero, which means that our answer is one third times the natural log of nine. And so the natural log of nine is not a whole number, but one third times the natural log of nine will be approximately equal to 0 0.7324. But either way, both of these answers would be acceptable answers for the solution to this definite integral. Let's look at another example. All right, so for our next example, we have the integral of x squared minus two x minus eight divided by x plus one dx. And so in this case, we have another rational function where we have a quadratic in the numerator and just x plus one in the denominator. Now, whenever you see a quadratic like this, you should try and factor it to see if any of the factors will cancel out with what is in the denominator here. And I'll save you some time. The factorization of this quadratic is going to be x plus two times x minus four, right? You would find that by just looking at your last term since x squared has a coefficient of one, we can just look at our last term and ask what factors of negative eight added together would get you the coefficient of your middle term, negative two. In this case, that would be negative four and positive two because negative four plus positive two would be negative two. And so that's how you would find this. But anyway, what this tells us is that none of these factors can cancel out with what is in the denominator here. And so we're not gonna be able to reduce this fraction in that way to make this integral easier. And so what we're gonna have to do here is use long division for this quotient here. And that will hopefully simplify this rational function to be something that we will be able to use the log rule for integration for. And you'll see that in just a second. And so what we're gonna have here is x squared minus two x minus eight. And we're going to divide that 
by x plus one. And so hopefully you are familiar with this long division process. This is something that you might have learned in a pre-calculus or algebra course. And what we'll do is ask ourselves, what can we multiply by x to get x squared? And if we multiply x by x, we'd get x squared. And so x times x is x squared. And then we'll multiply this x by one. And so we'll have positive x. And then we're going to subtract these terms. And so what we'll have here is x squared minus x squared. And so we'll have zero. And then you'll have negative two x minus positive x. And so that's gonna be negative three x. And then we have negative eight minus nothing. And so we just bring that down and have negative eight. All right, and so now we move on to the next step, which is to ask ourselves, what do we multiply x by to get negative three x? In this case, that would be negative three, right? We'll multiply negative three by x. We would get negative three x. So we have negative three x. And then we'll multiply this by our second term. And so negative three times one is negative three. So we'll have minus three. And we are going to subtract those terms. And so negative three x minus negative three x is negative three x plus three x. So we will have zero. And then negative eight minus negative three is negative eight plus three. So we will have negative five. And so negative five is going to be our remainder. And so what we'll have is that this rational function can be rewritten to be the integral of our quotient that we found here, x minus three. So we'll have x minus three plus our remainder divided by the divisor. So we're gonna have negative five divided by x plus one. And so we'll have negative five divided by x plus one. And so then all of this is still within our integral. We have just rewritten this function to be in this form, right? These are equivalent forms of the same function. But now what we have are two terms that we know how to integrate using the power rule for integration and another term that we know how to integrate using the log rule for integration, right? We have one divided by some function defined with x. That is a rational function that we can use the log rule to integrate. And so we can make that process easier by splitting up these two integrals. And so next we'll have that this is equal to the integral of x minus three dx minus, right, if I pull this negative out front, we'll have minus the integral of five divided by x plus one dx. And so now we have two separate integrals that we can integrate using their respective rules. We'll start with this integral. We'll use the power rule here and we'll have that this is equal to x to the power of two divided by two minus three x, right? We add one to the exponent. So we have one plus one is two divide by that new exponent of two. And then the integral of negative three or any constant, you're just gonna be multiplying it by x. And so we have negative three x. And then we will subtract this integral, which I'm going to use u substitution for. But first I'm just gonna pull out this five to the outside. So we'll have five times the integral of one divided by x plus one dx. And so if we clean up our work here, our next step is going to be to set u equal to x plus one right here so that we're gonna have one divided by u and du dx will just be equal to one because the derivative of x is one and the derivative of one is zero. And so if we solve for du, we'll have du is equal to dx by multiplying both sides by dx. And so if we replace x plus one with u and dx with du, we will have that this is equal to x squared divided by two minus three x minus five times the integral of one divided by u du. And then we can integrate this using the log rule of integration. And we'll have that this is equal to x squared divided by two minus three x minus five times the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c but that u can be replaced with what we said it equal to, x plus one. And so we can rewrite this to have x plus one inside our natural log function, and then plus c. And so that will be the final answer to this integral. All right, let's look at a different example. And so here we have the integral of one divided by x times the natural log of x to the fourth power dx. And so how are we going to integrate this function? Well, we have a rational function where we have our variables in the denominator. And the first thing that I would recommend that you do is when you see a natural log function as well, try to sort of manipulate it or reduce it to its simplest form, right? So if you see the natural log of some value to a power, you can use that property of logarithms that the natural log of a to the power of n is equal to n times the natural log of a. And so we can move that four to the outside and rewrite this integral to be equal to the integral of one divided by x times four times the natural log of x dx. And so then we can pull that one fourth out to the outside and that will help us see how we're going to use the log rule for integration here. 
or more specifically, how we're going to use use substitution so that we can use the log rule. So we'll have that this is equal to 1 fourth times the integral of 1 divided by x times the natural log of x. And so if we're going to use u substitution here, we have to ask ourselves, what are we going to set u equal to? Do you see a function and its derivative? Well, I see the natural log of x, and I see 1 divided by x. Well, I know that the derivative of the natural log of x is 1 divided by x, and so this is a perfect match. We can set u equal to the natural log of x, and that means that du dx, or the derivative, will be equal to 1 divided by x, and so if we multiply both sides by dx, we will have that du is equal to 1 divided by x dx, which is in our integral. We have 1 divided by x dx. And so we can replace that with du and replace the natural log of x with u, and we will have that this is equal to 1 fourth times the integral of 1 divided by u du, right? The natural log was replaced with u, so we have 1 divided by u, and this 1 divided by x and this dx were replaced by du. And so now if I clean up my work here, we can use the log rule for integration for this integral, and we'll have that this is equal to 1 fourth times the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c, and then we can replace u with what it is equal to, which is the natural log of x, and so we'll have that this is equal to 1 fourth times the natural log of the absolute value of the natural log of x plus c. And so that is our final answer, or the solution, to this integral. So for our next example, we have the integral of cosecant of theta divided by pi divided by pi d theta. And so this is a different kind of integral where the natural log is involved, and that is when we take the integral of four of our basic trigonometric functions. Right, we already knew how to take the integral of cosine and sine, but in our lesson we learned the rules for the other four individual trigonometric functions, where the integrals involve the natural log function. And so in this case, we're going to be using the rule for the cosecant function. We know that the integral of cosecant u du is equal to this right here. And so we want to get this integral to be in this form, where we have cosecant of u. And so let's use u substitution here. We'll let u be equal to the function inside our cosecant function. And so we'll have theta divided by pi. And so that means that du d theta, right, because it is defined with theta in this case, we are integrating with respect to theta. That's what d theta tells us. That derivative will be equal to 1 divided by pi, right? We have the derivative of theta to the first power, or our variable to the first power. And so that's just going to be equal to the coefficient, which is 1 divided by pi. And so that is our derivative. And if we solve for du, we will have du is equal to 1 divided by pi d theta, which is in our integral. We have 1 divided by pi right here and d theta right there. And so if we rewrite this integral, we'll have that this is equal to the integral of cosecant of u du. Right, we replace theta divided by pi with u because that's what we set it equal to. And we replace d theta and 1 divided by pi with du. All right, and so now we can use this rule right here that the integral of cosecant u du, which is what we have right here, is the negative natural log of the absolute value of cosecant u plus cotangent u plus c. And so that's what we'll have right here. We'll have that this is equal to the negative natural log of the absolute value of cosecant of u plus cotangent of u and then plus c. And so if we replace u with what we set it equal to, then we'll have our final answer that this is equal to the negative natural log of the absolute value of cosecant of theta divided by pi, right, that's what we set u equal to, plus cotangent of theta divided by pi, and then we have plus c. And so that is our final answer to the integral of this function. All right, and so that was the last example for this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments below. But if you don't have any questions, this is all I had for now. So I will see you next time.